Hi, I'm Ashen Droning On, and we're on a short road trip to test the new Air Selfie drone. This was originally a Kickstarter project. It gathered 3,000 backers, but is it any good? We're going to flight test it now and find out. We're going to be flight testing it in this video and I'm quite excited, although my co-pilot perhaps isn't as excited as me. Links to the products are in the video description. Please be sure to subscribe, click that thumbs up button and of course drop a comment below with your thoughts. So here we go, in from a new company that we're working with, rcmoment.com, and they sent it via DHL, which is an express courier. So do remember, any express delivery service, you're going to end up paying tax and duty when it arrives. But it's pretty cheap. This one was actually only £3, which is about $5. So let's have a look. Packaged nice and securely. And there is the Air Selfie box, nicely presented, and it's wrapped in a cellophane film. Got a nice blue colour underneath. Uh, so this is the Air Selfie 03. I'm not sure what the 03 means. Perhaps there were some earlier versions of this. Who knows? So this retails for about $100 or £100, or it's just over, I think. Originally cost a lot more, but it seems to have been reduced. There have been quite a few bad reviews of it, so maybe that's why the price has been dropped down. There it is. So it's tiny, really, really small, and um, it's apparently constructed from anodized aluminium, which they call uh, aero grade quality, but uh, who knows. Um, first instincts are it's pretty heavy considering its weight, actually. Uh, it's said to weigh 65 grams, uh, and obviously it's got an inbuilt battery, but it certainly feels heavier than that. We'll have a look at that in just a second. Else in the box, we have uh, instruction manual, a bit of paper here. Uh, okay, pre-flight checklist, a little instruction manual, and also a USB cable. And it's a USB, it's not a USB-C, it's a conventional USB cable that you'd use to charge an Android or a Samsung phone, for example. So let's have a look at the Air Selfie in more detail. So we've got the, as I say, aluminium surrounding here with the nice Air Selfie logo in the middle. We've got little brushless uh, motors here with six blade props connected to them. And they're very, very tiny, those motors. Pretty impressive that they can generate brushless motors this small. Around the drone itself, there's a kind of rubber uh, surround, which makes it nice and grippable. Uh, on the back, we've got a USB port there for connection to your PC. And of course, around the front, we've got a camera, which apparently is a five megapixel camera. There's of course no adjustable tilt on that camera. Uh, it's capable of 1080p at 30 frames per second. Apparently though, there is no electronic image stabilization and that is gonna be the first big problem with this. It's got no SD card slot, but it has got inbuilt four gigabytes of memory, uh, which yeah, you get a lot of video and photos in that, of course. And then looking underneath it, we've got the optical flow camera, which is that tiny, tiny little camera there, which is probably going to give you stability up to three, four, maybe five meters in altitude. And then there's also an ultrasonic sensor there. Now, I've not seen an ultrasonic sensor that looks like that before. Quite an interesting looking one. And then below that, there is the on and off button as well. Now, it's very, very compact in design this. I'm not quite sure how you'd get into this to actually change the props or <laughs> to service it. Uh, so no doubt that's all in the instruction manual, but certainly from a construction perspective, it feels great. And in terms of the size, here's my Samsung S8 Plus, which is a big mobile phone anyway. And you can see the size of the Air Selfie next to it, very small and compact. So this is definitely a pocket-sized drone, one of the first truly pocket-sized drones where you could get it in your pocket and probably actually forget it's there. So it's quoted as weighing 65 grams. Let's take a look at what it actually weighs. 63.7, so it's actually under the quoted specification weight, which is a refreshing change. You normally find that they're a little bit optimistic about weight. <laughs> um, so Air Selfie truly is lightweight and it certainly is portable. Let's take a closer look now at the app. So I'm using the Android platform here, and so we're going to first of all go into the Play Store, and we're gonna search for the app which is called Air Selfie. 
as you'd expect. Not to be confused with the Air Selfie Moment Drone app, although I do notice that Sim2 have now renamed their app to Moment Drone, which is far more logical. Uh, this app looks like gets a good score, actually, 4.2, uh, based on 30 reviews, although I must say I've had a look at this app already and I'm surprised it gets such a high rating. Uh, in terms of the versioning of the app, uh, it looks like we're currently on version 1.1.9. It was last updated on the 5th of May. Now, that was ages ago. And as you'll see, this app needs a lot of work. It's a worry to see that the app is not evolving at all. So we'll get that installing by pressing install. It's quite a big app as well at 57 meg. That's a fairly large, chunky app, considering the lack of functionality, as you'll see. Okay, so now that that's downloaded, it will take a few seconds to install. And when it's finished doing so, we can open it up. And you get a short introductory presentation which explains how to use the drone, etc., as well as some safety instructions, but we're gonna skip that because we don't need this. So we're now ready to connect to the Air Selfie via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to turn on my Air Selfie, and then I will drop down my wireless settings and we'll wait for it to appear in the list. And there it is, it's now appeared called Air Selfie. Now the numbers and letters that you see after the SSID there are actually the password you need to enter when you connect to it. So press on it and then the password is the same as you see there. So 83C0198E. Yours will be different, so note what your numbers and letters are and type them in, then press connect and we should end up connected to it very quickly. There we go. Right, we'll now switch back to the app and you can see we're now at the main page of the app. Now you've got three different control methods. Selfie mode, which they say is for beginners. And basically it is literally just up, down and rotate and slide left and right. So you don't get a whole lot of control from the drone in this mode. And actually I found that it's not actually that great. You can see we've got a live preview from the drone there as well. I'm just holding it to look out the window. But yeah, as I say, not a great control method, that one. I would personally avoid that. If we go back, you can see we've got selfie motion control mode. Now this is basically like the other mode, except that we get a single controller here, which is touchscreen. So not bad, but again, quite limiting. We'll go back and the mode, standard control mode is the one that I would recommend, to be honest. This is the only landscape mode. And as you can see, we have a number of controls here, which make it far easier to control the selfie drone. So we've got our live preview here. As I say, it is a landscape mode, this one. We've got across the top B mode, which is fixed controllers on the screen, as you can see. G mode lets you press and hold on the right hand side so you can tilt your phone and by tilting your phone it controls the drone. That's not a bad mode for beginners but it does get very confusing when the drone is facing you. So I would avoid that mode. The best mode to fly in is J mode which is your conventional mode you'll be used to on most other drones. Put your fingers anywhere on the screen and you can control it. You've got your altitude on the left and right and you've got your yaw, so left rotating left and right. You've got pitch forwards and backwards and roll left and right. At the top, we've got the buttons to take a photo like that. There's a slight pause when you do that, but it's not too bad. And then we've also got the button to start recording video and to stop recording video. Now there is a very slight lag when you first press that as you do get on quite a few different drones, but it's not so bad. You can see we're recording now and the video quality has actually stepped up in the live preview when we start that recording mode. So you can see the live video now. And what I'll do as well is because we're recording, I'll put the live video on the screen right now so you can see the actual quality of that video. So what I found, I've looked at the video already, the outdoor video quality is actually really good, but this drone doesn't handle indoor particularly well. Um, it seems to go a bit grainy and not particularly great quality. But I've, as I say, you can see that on the screen now. Judge for yourselves. So I'm going to stop the recording now by pressing the record button again. There is a slight lag on the app when it switches back into live preview mode. Bottom of the screen, we've got slide to take off. When you slide that, the app basically fires up and then you launch it into the air by pretty much throwing it, as you'll see in the flight test. It's quite fun. And then in the very bottom right hand corner, we've got a Wi-Fi connection strength and also battery. Now I wouldn't bother looking at the battery icon because this is not 
a long duration drone. This is probably one minute, two minutes at the most. So by the time you've glanced at that battery icon, the battery's probably flat. So that's pretty much it for the app. Besides that, you can go back to the main app and you can click on gallery, which will show you your photos and videos that you've captured. And from there, there's also a facility to download those photos and videos down onto your smart device and to share them. So you can now see the photos we've just taken as well as the video. So that's it for the app. I think it's time to flight test it. So we're gonna get the drone charged up right now and then we're gonna head out to the field. Okay, so lovely, lovely sunny day today. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it on by pressing and holding the power button, which is tiny. It lets off a little beep and that's about it. Right, next thing we need to do on the mobile phone is open up our Wi-Fi networks. And we should see now Air Selfie on there. There it is, connecting, because I've connected to it already. It's just gonna connect for me. Checking the quality. And then I'm gonna launch the Air Selfie app. Now, as I showed you in the demonstration of the app, it's not very fully featured. So we're just gonna go for the standard control mode option. And there you go, we've now got our live feed. So what I'm gonna do is start recording video immediately. There's a bit, a bit of an annoying lag when you press to start recording video, but it doesn't seem to alter the actual um, controls, which is good. It doesn't seem to stop you being able to control air selfie. So we've got our live feed, the drone is ready. I'm gonna to slide to take off on the app. Oui. And the props start, and at this point you just throw it. <laughs> I love that. Now it's got downward optical flow, and obviously that means it should be holding its position now, and I shouldn't have to give any control inputs at all. Um, but it is drifting, not particularly stable. I mean, it's not flying away, you know, I'm not having to chase after it yet, but it is moving around a fair bit. If I just zoom out and show you on there. <laughs> Now, we do have a very, very short flight time on this drone, and so I'm gonna be fairly quick with this. Uh, now, one thing I found during testing is it's quite hard to get you framed in the video on this drone, and the main reason there is because the camera is horizontal, so it's not pointing down at all, which means if it's above your head height, it's essentially looking over you. Uh, now, it is all over the place at the moment. Uh, let's just quickly see how high we can get it to go. Now it's quoted a range of 20 meters. I'm just gonna send it up and up and up and up and see how far. Now remember at this sort of altitude, it's not gonna have any optical flow. So probably not wise to send it up to any significant altitude on a very windy day. <laughs> That'd probably be a very bad idea. Um, and the other thing about this drone is there's no sensitivity settings. So I need some more forward movement at the moment, more forward pitch. And I can't give it any because it's limited sensitivity. So I'm going to bring it back down before we run out of battery. I've got a warning on the screen actually about weak Wi-Fi signal and yeah, it's hardly any distance away. Now we've got a battery warning. Okay, well before the battery goes, let's quickly stop recording and take some photos. Uh, oh, tell me it's telling me it's landing, it's all over the place. I'm battling with it at the moment. Just, oop. Okay, that's not normally the way I like to end a flight test. It literally fell out of the sky. So <laughs> despite the fact that it said it was landing, it let me keep it up in the air, perhaps to stop it ditching in water in the event that it might be dropping out of your reach. But yeah, it just ran out of battery and then dropped from the air. So that was a fully charged battery there. And I would say, I mean, we'll check later, but I would say that's less than less than two minutes flight time, which, yeah, okay, it's a selfie drone, but it takes you a, a couple of minutes to frame the shot with this little thing because it's so unstable and also because of the camera being horizontal. So, oh, well, that's probably the shortest flight test I've ever done. Uh, and it, it is completely dead. It's actually dead to the point that it's turned off and that was fully charged. Uh, disappointing result outside. Uh, I think the next thing to do is quickly flight test this indoors, so we'll do that next. 
Now, just before we move on to the indoor test, the battery failed before we got to shoot any photos. And so here are a couple that I took whilst pointing the drone out of an upstairs window of my house. Not ideal, but it does show that the stills camera isn't actually too bad, although when the drone is in flight, the vibration and the instability of it can make some photos blurry. So indoors it's the same procedure, throw it to launch and here you can see it hovering in the middle of our lounge. Indoor stability is obviously far better but it isn't perfect and the optical flow system isn't working anywhere near as good as the $40 Cheerson and flying 3D drones that I reviewed just last week and yet this drone costs over $160. Now I wouldn't normally trust flying a new drone near my little baby, but because of Air Selfie's protected props, it is one feature of this drone that I really do like, not that he's at all interested in the drone. The video quality once again isn't that bad, but I found framing the shot to be a real headache because the drone doesn't seem to lock its your axis very well. Now another option is to of course stabilize the footage post-production, but if they added EIS, it wouldn't be necessary. Now, despite its negatives, Air Selfie is still an impressive looking drone concept, and I took it over to show a friend and their family, flying it right next to their kids without any fear of harm from the props. The video is quite grainy because daylight was fading, but as you can see, this drone is very much a kid-friendly device, but indoor and especially outdoor stability is clearly a real problem. So let's summarize Air Selfie, starting with the positives. The video and photo quality and clarity is actually fairly good, the video especially. It's quick and easy to get into the air and I love the throw to launch. It has an innovative and safe design with protected props. And of course, it's compact and lightweight, truly pocket-sized. But sadly, the negatives outweigh the positives quite heavily. Despite a recent price drop, it is still currently overpriced at $160 or £160. The app and the firmware desperately need enhancement and updates. In fact, the last update was in May. Optical flow has not been implemented successfully and it doesn't even work on a textured ground surface. Instability of the hover leads to blurred photos and wobbly video on some occasions, unfortunately. The flight time is far too short at just less than two and a half minutes and of course the battery is not replaceable. There are insufficient fail-safes, so Air Selfie can drop out of the sky when battery level depletes below a certain point. And finally, as we saw in the outdoor test, it is lacking control sensitivity settings, although this perhaps is because the drone is simply not capable of faster flight without becoming unstable. So that's the end of the review. I really hope that it was useful and links to this product are in the video description, although we have provided links to some far better products that we would recommend instead. At this price level, definitely consider Dobby, or if you have a little more to spend, get yourself a DJI Spark. Please hit that subscribe button. Your support lets me keep reviewing and give the video a thumbs up. And please, please, please comment below. I love hearing from my viewers, whether it's positive or negative feedback. Thanks very much for watching.